Okay, in this video we're going to extend our example for evaluating a function using a series approximation and a while loop. Uh, for this, now we're going to uh, we're going to evaluate it for the expon uh, the exponential of integers one through five, and then we're also going to see how long it took using tick uh, and talk, which I know has confused a lot of people in the past, but it's it's pretty simple. Uh, so, we're actually going off of the same code from the last video. Uh, I'm going to change that. And uh, the only thing that's different now is instead of defining our x explicitly as 5, we're going to define it using a for loop. Uh, well, specifically the index of a for loop. And what I mean by that, uh, so we're going to start with 4. And now we define our index, which in this case we're going to use this integer. Integer. <laughs> uh, and so we, again, we want that to be 1 through 5. And so the way you use uh, this, this notation here, 1, 1, 5, that is the start of the sequence, um, the step that you're going to take. So a lot of examples we used like dx equals 0.5. Uh, in this case, we're just going to step by one, so we'll have whole integers. So one, two, three, four, five, and uh, and then we'll have stop. That's where we want to stop, and that's five. So um, first, we should indent this. Um, pretty easy. So uh, we we want to make x equal to integer, uh, and so what that means is for the first time through the for loop, integer will be equal to one. And what that's going to do is set x equal to 1. Uh, then we'll have exponential of 1, and everything else should go just the same as before. Um, I have to add an end for this 4. But, um, I mean, that's the basic idea. It's not really a whole lot more complicated, except for the fact that um, we, if we use the same counter, um, it's really only going to tell us the number of terms that were needed in the last uh, this ending number, so five. It'll tell us, it should give us 23, which would be the same as the last example. Uh, but we want to store it for each individual number, so one, two, three, four, and five. So uh, the way we're going to do that is by uh, storing it in just a, a vector called number of terms, so number of terms, uh, and so uh, for vectors you can index them as we know, uh, and we can use the same index as we have up here. So for number of terms, index the index will be integer, uh, and what we want to store is the number of terms which was counted by count. So x so the number of terms equals count. Um, and so that, I mean, that really should be it. Uh, if we run this, we can print out number of terms, uh, and we see that we get different values for exponential of 1, exponential of 2, uh, and so forth. Uh, so it's really not that much harder. It's just that um, the only thing different here is defining your x and then defining your uh, a vector to hold your number of terms for each integer. Uh, and one last thing we'll want to add, as I had mentioned, was a, uh, a way to count how long it took uh, to evaluate each integer. So we're going to start by using tick, which starts a timer. So start timer. Uh, and then we want it to run through all of this. And then after. Uh, after it found out how many terms it took, we want to stop the timer. So stop timer, uh, and we're going to use uh, talk. But again, we want to see how long it took to evaluate all of this for each integer. So we we'll want to store that in another vector called, uh, we'll call that finish. So finish, uh, that works. Yeah, finish integer equals talk. Don't want to print that to the screen each time. So if we run this, and a number of terms should be the same, but now we'll have finish. 
And so we can see it took a different amount of time for each different integer. Uh, one little thing, if you want to see more digits, you can say format long. And I'll print out finish again. So now you can see we get a lot of accuracy for our answer. Um, for our purposes, this is really just an example, so we don't need this many. Um, but that's really that's how you extend it. It's really not that much harder. Again, um, I mean, this, if you went back to the last video, I said this was the hardest part, is defining um, how you're going to add these terms uh, in terms of your counter. Uh, but that's it for this video. I'm going to next cover how we can adapt this to a function. Uh, and, and we're going to, just for a preview, we're going to have our outputs be the value of the series sum, the number of terms it took, and how long it took. Uh, and, but, so that will be in the next video.